Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Cultivase. Welcome to another edition of Conservation Ag Update. I'm Noah Newman, Technology Editor. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. It's hard to believe December is here already and harvest season is in the books. But it was a late finish for some of our friends in southeast Wisconsin. Let's head to East Troy where longtime no-tiller Jim Studi wrapped up corn harvest just a few days before Thanksgiving, actually. And Studi will remember the 2023 growing season as a challenging one, kind of like a roller coaster. Wet in the spring, dry in the summer, some good rainfall late, followed by a scorching hot Labor Day weekend. But overall, Studi is happy with how his corn turned out, with yields as high as 230 bushels per acre in some of his fields. And I attribute that to the no-till, the resiliency of the field, the soil, um, from the no-till and then also to a cover crop and very, very early termination of the cover crop. As soon as it was planted, I terminated and uh, conserved all the moisture that was there. So we'd use the cover crop to dry out the seed bed and uh, then the residue to cut evaporative losses. So I'm really pleased at how that worked. Soybeans, not so much. Our soybean yields were down um, from our average a little bit. We were probably in the the mid 40s and there they just did not respond well to the drought and it was the same thing we had the cover crop on there and it helped early help me get planted by managing the soil moisture but then uh, they just they suffered the other thing i'd like to say so this is my fourth year of using drought guard hybrids and i'm really pleased at how well they perform when it is so dry Good to hear from Jim, as always. And as things start to slow down a bit, now's a great time to check your equipment, especially those tires. Did you know that over 75% of tractor tires are overinflated? Well, that is according to ag tire expert James Crouch, who says properly inflated tires will help reduce compaction, save fuel, and increase yield. Get out of your barn, look at your tires, just look at them. Uh, if you've got duels, it's not easy to see the inside tire, but get a flashlight, get a creeper, get down there, look at the tire to make sure you don't have cracks, make sure you don't have any leaks, because it, especially with duels, and I'll say this as a, as a North American problem more than a European problem, if one of those tires is higher inflated than the other, you're overloading the other tire, because a, a, a tire with more inflation pressure than the tire next to it is taller. So you're, you're putting stress on another tire that's not necessarily needed. Make sure your tires pressures are uniform. Make sure you don't have cracks. Make sure you don't have any objects locked in the tires. It's not uncommon to see bolts, deer antlers, stubble in some cases, all that stuff. Because at the end of the day, if you've got time to do it now, do it. Because you don't want to do that when you're prepping your planter in spring and all of a sudden you need a tire. You call your tire guy and he's two weeks out. And Crouch says contact your dealership to connect with a tire expert. They can help you figure out what your tire pressure needs to be. Switching gears, how much cereal rye biomass is needed to effectively control weeds? McCain Vogel has the answer in today's Cover Crop Connection. Thanks, Noah. McCain Vogel here for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Cereal rye is one cover crop that can be used to suppress weeds. At this Brooklyn, Wisconsin field day, Jose Nunez, a graduate student at weed scientist Rodrigo Worley's UW-Madison Research and Extension Lab, shared his findings about how much cereal rye biomass is needed for optimal weed suppression. And when it comes to weed suppression, water hemp suppression, in my case, which is the weed that I've been working with, we need biomass. If we don't have a good amount of biomass, enough biomass, we're not gonna have a good weed suppression or a good water hemp suppression. But if you notice on that plot, when we go beyond 4,500 pounds per acre of dry biomass, that's when we start to see a good separation in water hemp density. So if you ask us today, how much is good enough, I would say 4,500 pounds uh, oftentimes can provide effective water hemp suppression. If you talk about different weeds, different weed species like giant rag, which is a large broadleaf seed weed, uh, you're probably gonna need a little bit more. His research also showed the importance of using a cover crop along with an herbicide program for successfully suppressing weeds. A cereal rye cover crop shouldn't be a substitute for herbicide applications, Nunez says because the pre-emergence herbicide is needed for residual weed control. To learn more about Nunez's research, head to notillfarmer.com to read a summary of the topics discussed at the Brooklyn, Wisconsin Field Day. That's all for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Until next time, I'm McCain Vogel. Back to you, Noah. Good stuff as always. Thank you very much, McCain, and congrats to your Ravens on their victory last week. Time now for the Farmer Feature. Greg and Tier switch from conventional tillage to strip till 
eight years ago to save money and reduce soil erosion on his 1,000 acre farm. And the self-proclaimed accidental conservationist bet the farm on strip till and it's paying off. He's actually saved a ton of money on fuel, he says, with only one pass and slashing fertilizer costs by nearly 50% with his 12 row ETS soil warrior. I am looking and challenging my agronomist uh, how to do things differently. With this unit, it's a single hopper. Um, it's a blend of P and K in there. Um, but my fields are becoming healthier. Um, so some areas that don't need, you know, the, the 200 pounds of uh, P and K out there, I, can only, I only need 100. So why put 200 out there? So by, you know, writing prescriptions and so forth, um, looking at my soil's health and so forth, I was able to save about $3 per acre. I'm still building my soil where it needs to be built, and, but I'm using my bank on my area that I don't need to build. Um, how many people can say right now in this economy that they're actually building their soil health? Uh, I am, uh, I can, um, just by doing this. Greg says he spent $50,000 on fertilizer in 2020 after switching to the Soil Warrior system with a John Deere rate controller in 2021, he spent only 34,000 on fertilizer. All right, we're going ahead of the curve this week with Canadian-based ag tech startup Lucent Bio. Our Dan Crummett caught up with sales manager Gerald Reeves, who's also a no-tiller, to talk about the company's new Soilios micronutrient fertilizer for corn and soybeans. So our corn blend is a mix of all three of the iron, manganese, and zinc different percentages in the guaranteed analysis, but, um, you know, each one of those micronutrients offers different uh, advantages in the growing cycle of the plant. For example, manganese uh, helps with photo photosynthesis. It's critical for photosynthesis. So we put a little manganese in that corn blend, same with this, the bean blend. You know, zinc helps with uh, protein synthesis and uh, provides uniform maturity through the growing season, but specifically zinc helps with root development uh, and calcium translocation. So, uh, and of course we throw iron, a little bit of iron in that same corn blend because, um, you know, we're looking for chlorophyll formulation. Soilios, corn and soybeans are durable pellets that blend well with other dry fertilizers and the company says it can be seed placed or broadcast at rates of five to 15 pounds per acre. And let's wrap things up with our photo of the week. And I gotta tell you, the late Dave Brandt would be proud of this one. Check it out. This is South African no-tiller Janny Keat holding a giant tillage radish. That's almost as tall as him. He says he planted it in the middle of spring with a piket fine seed planter. And the radish is part of his pollinator mix that houses beneficial insects for pest control. So he says he didn't apply any chemicals or inorganic fertilizers, broke off about three feet. It went much deeper in the soil, however, he says. And we'd love to see your pictures and videos, as always, on the program. Shoot me an email. Here's my email address right here in Newman at lespub.com. Thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of Conservation Ag Update. We'll see you next time.